Now, what is scurvy? It's a disease state caused by vitamin C deficiency. And that's the topic of today's show on Dr. Osborne's Zone. So without further ado, let's break vitamin C down. Now, it has several different functions. I like to refer to vitamin C as human duct tape because it's so critical for so many different functions and without it, the body starts to fall apart, hence duct tape. But if we look at those functions here and just kind of summarize some of the key ones, it plays a role in the formation of dopamine through the metabolism of the amino acid tyrosine. It plays a role in folate metabolism, folate's a B vitamin, vitamin B9 specifically. It plays a role in how we produce the neurochemical serotonin, which regulates pain and happiness. It plays a role in collagen formation. And most people know vitamin C by this role. Um, we'll dive a little bit more deeply into that shortly. It regulates cholesterol. It plays a role in immune cells and how they respond to threats. It helps with lysine metabolism also to help form collagen. It forms or helps in the production of carnitine. Interestingly enough, a lot of people today, not even so much keto as carnivore, going on a carnivore diet. When you're on a carnivore diet, one of the functions of carnitine is that you use it to shuttle fat so you can metabolize fat or burn fat as energy, uh, which requires carnitine to do that. Um, but when you're on a carnivore diet and you're not eating adequate liver, what happens is you don't get any vitamin C. And of course, vitamin C is necessary to form carnitine. And when you're eating predominantly protein and fat, you need that carnitine shuttle to metabolize that fat. And this is one of the most common deficiencies we see in people on carnivore diets. Interestingly enough, because you get carnitine from eating animal meat, but I think it's because of the fat metabolism is the need for that is so great. We know that it's important for adrenaline formation, the catecholamine adrenaline. We know that you need vitamin C to make bile acids and you also need vitamin C to form nitric oxide, which allows blood vessels to dilate. So lots of different functions from one nutrient and without it, uh, we're in deep trouble. So here is just a few kind of prettier summaries of the role of vitamin C um, and, and a couple of other different things here. As you can see here, vitamin C plays a major role in the, in the formation of antioxidants or antioxidant function. It scavenges free radicals. Uh, vitamin C is also very, very important. It's not on here, but uh, in the chelation and detoxification of heavy metal, especially lead. And so um, we, we there are a number of studies that show that, that people with vitamin C deficiency have higher lead and vice versa, people with higher lead deplete their vitamin C stores. We, we, as I mentioned before, dopamine synthesis for noradrenaline, hormone synthesis, as well as iron absorption, vitamin C enhances iron absorption. And so those of you uh, who maybe have a diagnosis of hemochromatosis, which is a disease of iron metabolism. Um, you have to be cautious around higher doses of vitamin C intake. It's not that you can't use vitamin C, it's just that you better monitor your iron levels uh, and make sure that it's not spiking you un unnecessarily. And then of course, collagen production, as I mentioned earlier, carnitine synthesis, but also the regulation of gene and epigenetic erasers, gene expression and epigenetic erasers and other amino acids like lysine and arginine and tyrosine plays a role in all of, their, um, all of their metabolism and function. If we look at vitamin C's functions in the immune system itself, you can see it's got different roles. This review on vitamin C broke it down nicely in between innate immunity and adaptive immunity. And so you can see here with the neutrophils, this is your army, if you will, of your white blood cells. It enhances their migration in response to what's called chemotaxis, which is when there's a, a stimulation or a damage, whether it's inflammatory or infectious. It enhances the engulfment or the phagocytosis of microbes. So neutrophils have a kind of a Pac-Man-like effect where they will, well, they will eat up microbes or their chemicals. 
It stimulates free radical generation and the killing of microbes through neutrophil stimulation, and it supports caspase-dependent apoptosis, so it helps with cell destruction. In macrophages, it enhances uptake and clearance, vitamin C does. Vitamin C aids in the maturation and proliferation of natural killer cells. Many of you may have heard of these, but where are they very critically important is in basically in modifying or, or destroying cancer cells. We also have the vitamin C regulation or differentiation of Th1 types of T cells, so T helper cells, generate CD8 memory T cells, activates something called FOXP3, which is a master uh, transition factor, regulates the activity of regulatory T cells. So a lot of immune response or immune, um, immune regulation around vitamin C. You can see down here, it also helps to increase IgG production or levels as well. So vitamin C critical for immune function. As a matter of fact, one of the ways that many doctors uh, believe that vitamin C should be measured is not in the serums. It's common that you know serum levels, uh, it's a simple blood test that can be done uh, through LabCorp, Quest, and um, serum levels just measure quantitatively how much ascorbic acid is floating around in your blood at any given moment in time. But many researchers believe that it, it should be measured in the white blood cell. And this, is, this diagram that I just showed you is one of the reasons why, because vitamin C plays such a huge role in immune regulation. But we also believe that because white blood cells have a longer lifespan of about six months, that measuring them in the white blood cells is a truer indicator of dietary uptake and, um, and, and overall storage status of vitamin C as opposed to just looking at it in terms of serum. Okay, this was a really good review published a few years ago on kind of a, uh, a conglomeration of the different functions of vitamin C, just simply put. So if you wanna screenshot this, as I just showed you the immune functions, catecholamine and neurotransmitters. This is dopamine, serotonin, and adrenaline. The production and maintenance of collagen, that's for your muscles, tendons, ligaments, blood vessels. Many of your tissues in your body contain and need and survive and thrive uh, with healthy collagen. And then as well, the synthesis of cortisol and the endothelial vasodilation and barrier function. So this has to do with nitric oxide, um, um, vitamin C's role was elaborated or elucidated in, in uh, helping blood vessels dilate and helping to seal the barriers. Um, in, you know, for example, your blood-brain barrier and your gut barrier, your kidney has a barrier, so very, very important in that regard. 